Wirecard, an online payment company that was once the darling of Germany's fintech industry, lost nearly $12 billion of market value and filed for insolvency just days after revealing a $2 billion hole in its balance sheet. What's happening at Wirecard looks like being one of the worst financial disasters in Europe since the financial crisis. I mean, you have to stretch back a long period of time to have an implosion of this magnitude in Europe. The missing Wirecard money was supposed to be held in two trust accounts, but auditors investigating the company said they couldn't find it. This $2 billion is essentially equivalent to all the profits that Wirecard has made in more than a decade. And everyone is wondering, where did that money go? And nobody knows at the moment whether it exists, whether it ever existed or not. Here's what we know. Let's rewind and start with what Wirecard actually does. We are a global fintech company with 20 years of payment experience. The German company provides software and systems that link retailers, consumers and the financial system. So essentially what they do is they collect sort of payment details from people who want to buy stuff online or, or even in stores. Uh, they collect those details from their cards and then they perform the role of confirming, settling, processing that whole transaction when you buy anything online, whether it be a holiday, some goods or services. Their background was, a lot of it was in gambling and uh, pornography or adult entertainment. Over the years, the company began to bloom as commerce shifted online and away from cash payments. It attracted interest from giants like SoftBank and Credit Suisse. Their stock grew almost sixfold between 2016 and 2018. But some have questioned Wirecard's business model and whether the company was actually worth its market valuation. I think it was around October 2015 when uh, I used to write a blog actually and one of the readers of the blog uh, contacted me and said, have you ever looked at this company called Wirecard? And I hadn't, I'd never heard of Wirecard to be honest. That's Matt Earl. He's a short seller, meaning he tries to make money by betting that a certain company's share price will fall. In 2016, Earl published a report accusing Wirecard of malpractice. The main accusation was that they, they had uh, probably been instrumental or in, uh, instrumental and involved in this uh, processing illegal gambling, US, US facing uh, illegal online gambling monies. The company denied those allegations and Earl says he stopped short selling its stock some years ago. Starting early last year, a new wave of Financial Times articles on the company's global operations led to Wirecard calling in KPMG for a special audit. This audit was supposed to demonstrate that uh, a bunch of the business that people had said they doubted was really real. But KPMG said it wasn't able to determine the answer to some of those questions. And one of the biggest questions was why there was uh, a bunch of money supposedly in some trustee accounts and whether that money was really there. When auditors went looking for the $2 billion of cash that Wirecard had said was in two trust accounts in the Philippines, what they found was a gaping hole. Electronic scans of documents confirming the accounts had been sent to Ernst & Young, but its main auditor, Ernst & Young, finally said that these documents weren't reliable and that they thought they'd been deceived. The Wirecard story then began to unravel quite rapidly. CEO Marcus Brown stepped down, Wirecard said that the missing two billion probably didn't exist, and then... Wir haben gestern Abend den ehemaligen Vorstandsvorsitzenden Dr. Markus Braun hier in München festgenommen, nachdem er aus Wien angereist ist. What he stands accused of is uh, inflating the value of the company through feigning business with these third party acquirers. Brown has consistently denied wrongdoing and his lawyers didn't respond to a request for comment. The partner companies in question were supposed to process payments for Wirecard in countries where it didn't have full licenses to operate. But it couldn't be determined whether they generated any revenue for the company at all. In a matter of days, the company had filed for insolvency proceedings, citing over indebtedness. Matt Earl, the short seller, says even if he's not making money from Wirecard's latest woes, he's glad that people are starting to see the clearer picture. Obviously, the more pieces that you, you, you begin to, to put into the puzzle, the, 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 the clearer the picture becomes. But there's still a big question over whether or not that $2 billion actually exists. Wirecard executives have advanced two theories. 
One is that the numbers were completely made up, they, the, the revenue was never there, and that Wirecard was simply trying to inflate the value of its business in order to make its shares more attractive, in order to borrow more money. Uh, and the other option is that some of this business did exist, but for whatever reason, it wasn't really being done on behalf of Wirecard and the money was never put where it was supposed to be put. And in fact, it has been, you know, in all or in part taken by some other people somewhere.